Whether you're a diver or snorkeler, or maybe even just have an upcoming trip planned, you're probably watching this video because you have a GoPro Hero 12, and you're looking for the right settings to give you the best possible results in camera without having to do any sort of heavy editing in post. On the other hand, if you're brand new to this and you feel like you don't even know the first thing, jump to this other video that I have linked up above where I can walk you through all the Hero 12's basic features as well as a step-by-step -step guide in getting connected to the Quick App. And if you're ready to move forward with what I feel like are the best settings for underwater use, let's get started. Now before we get into these settings, we need to switch the controls from easy to pro. You do this by swiping down from the top of the screen, then swiping right. On the bottom left, you'll see where it says controls, so go ahead and drill into that, and then you can toggle it to pro. And because you made this change, you now have full control over the rest of your settings that are available in different menus. And aside from changing your controls to pro, before jumping to these other menus, we also want to make sure that we're shooting in 10-bit at a higher bitrate. Long story short, this is going to ensure that we have the highest quality footage possible, and it's also going to ensure that we preserve this quality, especially when we're making any sort of corrections in post-processing. And even if you don't want to do any sort of editing in post, 10-bit will still give you a better overall quality. In order to do this, we're going to want to go to Pre-References. You want to scroll down to Video. Here you're going to set the bitrate to high, and then the bit depth to 10-bit. You're also going to see another option called Anti-Flicker, and from what I understand, this has to do with the frequency that's going to run through light bulbs and other sorts of artificial light sources. If you're in the US, you want to choose 60. Now that you have the settings dialed in on the main menu, we can now focus on the different profiles. Throughout your dive, you're going to be able to switch between a few different profiles. And the idea is that each of these profiles are going to offer you a unique perspective that are going to help for you to tell the story of your experience, whether it's wide angle, a more narrow view, or even slow motion. You're then going to be able to take all these different shots back to post and edit them together in a nice sequence or just let the GoPro Quick App do it all for you, which I'm sure most are going to choose that second option. In order to create these presets, you can start by drilling to the existing one on the bottom center of the screen. Once you have this menu open, you can see the existing preset, and down on the bottom you can see an option that says create a new preset. Let's edit this existing preset by drilling into the option on the right hand side. Now that we have the video settings screen open, you can see three different options under profile. You're going to see standard, HDR, and log. Since we don't intend on doing a whole lot of editing in post, I would avoid log for the time being, but if you do want to experiment with more cinematic looking settings, this is definitely the way to go. And to be honest, if we want to talk more about shooting and log, that should be covered in an entirely different video. Now, as for the difference between standard and HDR, HDR is going to give you more detail in the shadows and less blown out highlights. However, some people just don't like the look of it. So for the sake of this video, we're just going to set it on standard. I do encourage you though, on your own time to experiment between both settings and see which one you personally like better. Moving on down to aspect ratio, I'm going to go with 16 by nine and keep in mind when you change these, the available options will change as well. For resolution, I'm going to keep mine on 4K. 5.3K is great and everything, but you're more likely to have overheating issues, and it's also going to take up more space on your SD card. Keep in mind that there's more to quality footage than just resolution. Now we have frame rate. I'm going to set mine at 60 frames a second. That way we can either play this back at regular speed or slow it down by 50%. Looking at the lens, we're going to go with wide. This first profile is going to give us a wide angle perspective, giving us a feel for the scene and the environment. And for hypersmooth, we're going to set this on auto boost. As far as the capture menu is concerned, I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone, but scrolling on down to ProTune, we start with the shutter speed. Since we're shooting at a frame rate of 60 frames a second, you usually want your shutter speed to be double that, but using this setting underwater without the assistance of artificial light, you're going to get darker results than you want, so we're going to go ahead and set this to auto. And of course, in order to keep your footage from being consistently overexposed, go ahead and set your EV balance to negative 0.5. Usually when you're shooting above water, you want to adjust your white balance to 5500K, but when you're underwater, even changing your depth by 5 feet will require you to adjust your white balance, so in this case, we're just going to set it to auto. And feel free to set it on native as well, but that will require a lot more post-processing. Moving on, my ISO minimum is set to 100, and my ISO max is at 800. Sharpness is set on low if you plan on doing a lot of editing in post, because if you're adding in the sharpness while post-processing, it's always going to look way better. But if not, just put it on medium, and keep in mind if you set it on high, it's going to look terrible. I keep my raw audio off, 
and I keep wind reduction off as well. And last but not least, we have the shortcuts menu, so feel free to set these up however you find best. So that was the first profile that was designed primarily to give you a wide angle perspective, giving you a sense of the environment around you. Now we're going to set up the exact same profile, but just making it more narrow, that way we could punch in a little bit more in the detail. We're going to do this by starting at the video preset menu, going down to the very bottom and selecting create new preset. You're going to select video and then hit the check mark. Now you're going to scroll down to the lens and select linear. And I also suggest to try out linear plus horizon lock. Even underwater, this is going to keep the horizon level and it's almost going to feel like you're using a gimbal. So that was the second profile. Now we're going to create the third one. This one's going to be a slow motion profile. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Scroll down to the very bottom, select create new preset, highlight video, and then hit the check mark. We're going to do 240 frames a second, which is incredible slow motion. Unfortunately, you can't do this in 4K, so we're going to go ahead and select 2.7K. Select the 240 frames a second. And for your lens, feel free to dabble in whichever perspective you want. I typically set mine on wide. Everything else should look the same, but I also recommend to select the proper shutter speed on this one. Since we're shooting at such a high frame rate at 240 frames a second, I'm going to select 1 over 480, and since it may come out a little bit dark, in order to compensate for this, we're going to go down to ISO max and select 1600. So now we've covered all the settings and created three different profiles, so now it's time for the fun part. Let's take this GoPro underwater and show you exactly what this footage can look like when you shoot in these different perspectives and put them together in a sequence. And as soon as I complete that video, I'm going to post it right here. And if you want to learn more about an alternative to the GoPro Hero 12, take a look at this video that I made about the DJI Osmo Action 4. Be sure to subscribe for similar content. Thanks for watching.